Welcome. This is what is happening on the sun today, the 21st of June, 2011. We have two anniversaries to celebrate today. Seven years ago today, Spaceship One, the first commercially produced manned spacecraft, made its first suborbital flight. And just five years ago, the two newly discovered moons of Pluto, Nix and Hydra, were named. After giving the appearance of being brain dead for the last 24 hours, the sun gave us a pleasant surprise first thing this morning. It produced a long duration sea flare, which is usually indicative of a large coronal mass ejection going off. And the event is still underway while I'm producing this video. So let's take a look at the sunspot regions and see if we can find out where it occurred. Region 1236 still seems to be the most dominant region on the disk in terms of field strength, size and magnetic complexity, which will make it the most likely candidate to have produced the event. And two of the regions that I discussed yesterday are now newly numbered regions, 1239 and 1240. The region to the north and east of region 1236 disappeared overnight. When we look at the sunspot and magnetic movies, we don't see a lot of clues as to where this flare came from. Uh, there doesn't seem to be a lot of change in any of the sunspot regions. Nor is there any evidence that a new region is coming over the east limb, or that any new regions are emerging rapidly. So let's take a look at the 48 hour movies from the AIA instrument on the Solar Dynamics Observatory, and take a particular look at the Helium 304 transition region movie, which is usually a good indicator of where eruptions like this come from. And indeed, region 1236 is the culprit. So let's take a closer look and see what happened. You can see that there's a large dark filament to the north of the active region. At the beginning of the flare, that becomes unstable and starts to lift off. There, did you see it? But this is an X-ray flare, so the best way to look for it is to look in the coronal images from the AIA instrument. You, you can see at the time of the flare that some of the region darkens. This is an indication that the field lines have been blown open. And then following that, an arcade of loops appears where the flare site was. This is the same field lines reclosing again and in doing so releasing a lot of energy. So let's take a look at the coronal mass ejection itself. This is a combination of the C2 and C3 instruments from uh, the SOHO spacecraft. First you see a uh, coronal mass ejection off the northeast limb which was the event that I talked about yesterday and right at the very end you see this blossoming of a coronal mass ejection all around the Sun. That means it's either heading straight towards us or straight away from us. To differentiate between these, we can go to the stereo data. In this case, I'm going to use the stereo behind data, which means that the Earth is to the right. Initially, we see that there's a large coronal mass ejection moving away from the Earth, i.e. to the left. But right at the end, we see that there's a large CME heading towards the Earth. So this confirms that, in fact, the flare was in region 1236, and it did launch a CME coming our way. The ACE data shows us that the solar wind passing by the Earth has yet to be affected by this event, and it would be surprising that if it had, for it generally takes two to three days for a coronal mass ejection to reach the Earth. The NOAA 15 data shows us that the auroral arc is relatively quiet, and the KP index has been varying between 1 and 3. So in summary then, the sunspot number is at 43, the X-ray background remains at about B2, the radio sun is at 96 solar flux units. The solar wind speed has increased to 440 kilometers per second with a density of nearly 9 protons per cubic centimeter. And the KP index is rated at quiet. So my forecast for the next 24 hours is that C flares are still possible. We might even get an M flare, though it usually does take um, more than 24 hours for an event like this to reset. But the chance of getting an X flare is very low. The sunspot number should remain low, but coronal mass ejections still are likely. And we are now getting the possibility of a geomagnetic storm, if not in the next 24 hours, at least in the next 72. In the longer term, there's no new regions due back over the limb for another three or four days. So again, we rely on growth in the existing regions or the emergence of new regions on the visible disk for any new activity. Remember, there's nothing to get alarmed about by such events. We've seen hundreds of filament eruptions since I started this series. This one just happens to be heading our way, as several have before. All we're likely to get are a few bright aurora, and then only if the interplanetary magnetic field happens to be in the right direction. So there's a 50-50 chance of that. If you want to know more details about what's going on on the Sun, follow the links in the description box below. 
If you want to see earlier editions of the Sun Today, go to my channel. They're listed there, along with some videos that you might find entertaining about global warming. If you want to go back and see what the Sun looked like one rotation ago when it had the same face towards the Earth, go to my video on the 25th of May. If you want to go back two rotations, go to my video on the 28th of April. Today's featured global warming video is a video about whether Michael Mann's hockey stick is still valid. The links are posted in the description box below. So that's it for today. Keep safe. Bye for now.